I'm afraid there are only two genders. That's it. End off. I've just seen, if, if you want to be a rapper, you'd have to get bummed by Puff Daddy or whoever was above you. Yeah, I've done the, um, the whole BBC thing, the Sky thing, the, all that stuff, and that all ended in 2016. I was officially banned from mainstream media, and still am, for that matter. Uh, in my opinion, they've tried to put the bisexual kind of flag tones on, on the, on the St George's uh, cross, which I just think is really, really naive of them. You know, I get it fits the women's team, because most of the women's team, like they are in hockey or f in, in um, other sports, Certainly in football, they're quite lesbian. <laughs> it's quite a lesbian. Like, real women kind of don't play football or hockey. As you can see, we've clearly uh, ruffled the establishment's feathers by, you know, shining a light on some of these issues. Um, if you want to support us and want to join our community, whether that's to defend freedom of speech, whether that's to affect social change for good, or whether that's to just listen to some good old-fashioned football conversation without any of this woe, DEI nonsense creeping into it, you know where to join us. We're over at Patreon forward slash Common Sense with Joey Barton. Come and be part of our community. Keep up the good fight. This is the satellite version of the Common Sense podcast uh, today, obviously this evening, actually I'm joined by David Vance. Um, David, I don't know a lot about yet other than um, we, we've kind of got mutual acquaintances online and I know you've followed a bit of my stuff and supported it. And then obviously this week I've, I've started following you and I have seen your stuff pop up on my algorithm as well. And, and, and so yeah. we have, we, we have clearly some common ground um, and hopefully yeah. over the next hour and two hours or whatever we end up conversing for, we, we can find that common ground. So listen, thanks for joining me. Um, great yeah, to see you. Face. My pleasure. My, my pleasure, Joy. It's, it's been a real pleasure to, to, to follow you. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the thing about it is that when it comes to like the world of social media, we, we need a balance of voices. Uh, and, and, you know, I've been on I've been on Twitter since the beginning of time. Like, even, you know, from 2009, I've been there, Joy. Uh, I was taken off it. I was I was removed from Twitter for being a bad boy in 2020. September 2020, because I opposed lockdowns. I opposed all of that nonsense. And uh, then I was brought back in 2022. So I've, I've had a fresh lease of life, Joey. And not, and not a further opportunity to create mischief or speak truth, depending how you want to look upon it. And uh, I'm enjoying it. I can, I can, and I can hear that lovely Northern accent, uh, Northern Irish accent twang to yeah. you. So obviously, yeah. what one thing you know about there is is obviously speaking truth to power. Um, so so you got kicked off Twitter. Obviously, it sounds like in the Jack Dorsey era. Yeah, yeah, the do yeah. Well, that was the time when the British government had a clear backdoor into Twitter, and uh, I, myself and Katie Hopkins were taken off within a couple of weeks of each other back then because again, um, they were able to influence things, you know. So, uh, but prior to that. Prior to 2020, as I say, I'd been on the, the, the Twitters from 2009. I'd done other stuff before that. Um, I've been on mainstream media, Joy. I've done, I've done the, um, the whole BBC thing, the Sky thing, the, all that stuff. And that all ended in 2016. I was officially banned from mainstream media and still am for that matter uh so i'm not allowed to go on the bbc what um, caused that what what's what's caused that yeah well, well i mean i committed two cardinal sins back then i was pro brexit i wanted to see the uk stand alone and i was also pro trump and i, I remember i can remember it like, like it was yesterday the bbc invited me into the studio to have a chat back in I can't remember, October or so of 2015. And the big discussion was who's going to be the next US president. And of course, everybody was Hillary Clinton this, Hillary Clinton that. I was saying, no, I think it's going to be this uh, orange colored man, uh, Donald Trump. I think he's going to win. And so they all laughed at me. And uh, that was it. And uh, they weren't laughing within two months, though, because, as you know, Trump won. We got Brexit and I got the boot from the BBC uh, and the rest of the mainstream media. You see, one of the things what's great about what you're doing, what I'm trying to do and others on what we shall call the resistance side are doing is we're creating our own media joy. 
We we don't need them, the, the mainstream. The mainstream is as crooked as it can be in so many ways we can talk about. And, and you know, the technology now has advanced so much that we can speak to the world. I don't. You don't need to go to a BBC studio. I sure as heck don't want to go to a BBC studio. We can get our message out without their interference and the censorship and all the stuff that goes along with it. So, so I think there's a new dawn and it's great to see people like yourself and others coming along uh doing stuff and trying to build stuff because that that's how we fight back you, you're never going to do it from the you know the belly of the i used to talk about when i went into the belly of the the belly of the beast the bbc i, I felt like i need to take you know a crucifix and uh garlic uh, to, to keep me safe from the darkness that was the bbc and uh, I did. Uh, I managed to survive it, you know, uh, just about. But I never enjoyed it. I always hated it because it was always three against one, and you know, it was totally biased. Um, so um, the fact that we've now, I've moved on. I don't care about that anymore. I do care about this stuff. I do care about what we can do, um, either you know, digitally or in, in in studios or even in live auditoriums. I care about that. Um, and you know, the, the final thing, just on this one, to say to you is that. Uh, Back in 2020, uh, like the world was closed down, wrongly in my opinion, uh, for, for so-called COVID. And, and humanity was distanced from each other, you know, families from each other, uh, you know, um, uh, children from their grandparents, all of that. Cruel, cruel stuff. And, and we are naturally, you know, human beings thrive in each other's company. We love it. And so that's one of the things that's driven me in recent times to start doing live shows and stuff, because I sense that when we're, when we all come together, it's somehow more that the total is the sum is greater than, than than all of us. You know, there's a there's an energy that comes from people being together, especially like minded people and people who are oftentimes being, you know, demonized or, or, or marginalized or whatever. And so uh yeah, so so I remain, Joey, despite the mad world we live in, I remain reasonably, on a good day, reasonably buoyant. Uh, not not every day, but on a good day. Yeah, and that's, you're so true in that, in terms of, you know, each of us on our own are capable of brilliance or madness, whichever way you want to look at it. Yeah. But when we come together, obviously when when really good people connect with, with the right energy come together. You get some of the greatest music, some of the greatest theatre, some of the greatest art ever produced, football teams or whatever that is. Um, and I do really feel for me, the big, the big tipping point for me, David was, was, was COVID. You know, yeah. I, I, I'm a massive his, history fan, you know, obviously just as an amateur, loved it in school and stuff like that. And I always, I always wondered how, how did the second world war, how did that happen? And then COVID happened and I was like, oh, my God, it actually happened very, very easily. You know, I've seen yeah. people lose their minds um, yeah. in the midst of trying to do the right thing and trying to play by the rules. But but also, you know, the, it, it had elements of East Germany and the Stasi, you know, phoning up on people. You know, he's had two walks a day or he's, um, you yeah. know, he's gone out without a mask. And it's like, have, how, have yeah. we, how, how have we come to this? Well, you see, very. The th it's really interesting. The, people used to always say, "Joey, you know, how how did the Germans? How did they fall into line with with the Nazis and with Hitler? How how did it happen?" And, and lots of people pondered that. After twenty twenty, I I don't even. It's it's perfectly clear how it happened, and that is group think is very powerful. If authority people seem to deflect to the, or you know defer to authority. I suggest that people like you and me and maybe some of the people listening to this, we, we are kind of maybe natural rebels. So we we, we don't necessarily do what authority think, tells us to do. And that that was that was kind of my wakening up moment as well, because up until that point, I was I was relatively normie, if mm. you put it like that. Uh, since then, I mean, I've gone down about a million rabbit holes. I'm very happy <laughs> to go down the rabbit holes, I have to say. But it was COVID that done it. So I think... The whole COVID thing backfired. They thought that they could get, you know, the the whole uh, the, the masks and the, the the lockdown and all that stuff away, and we would all go along with it. There was a percentage of us didn't, and those numbers have grown, and we've been sadly proven right in an awful mm. lot of the stuff we were saying. Um, so, uh, so it's it's funny, you know, like you say, you mentioned history, um, uh, like. You know, I look at this, I've looked at things now, like you mentioned World War II. 
one of the big things they said back in, if you remember back in 2020 was, oh, about the COVID. Oh my God, it's as bad as the Spanish flu. The Spanish flu. And then you, 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 you actually investigate, well, what was the Spanish flu? Well, number one, it wasn't Spanish. And number two, it wasn't the flu. It was a bacterial, uh, a bacteria, uh, bacterial infection, essentially, caused by poor hygiene in mm. the aftermath of World War I. So once you start you know, unraveling the, the bonds of history, you discover an alternative history, Joey, uh, which is the one that I am fascinated by. And, and you know, the, in some ways, you know, the more things change, the more they say, stay the same. Uh, people in world, pre to World War I were propagandized, World War II propagandized, COVID propagandized by and the media is so strong now, Joey, as well. Like, let's be honest, back in those times and, you know, 80 years ago and uh, back to 1914, whatever, uh, we didn't have, you know, mass media. We didn't have 24 hour. So we didn't have social media. Mm -hmm. So the ability to manipulate minds is greater now than it ever has been. But paradoxically, the ability for people like us to push back is greater than it ever has been. So it's interesting times. Well, you've got people who've got an inquisitive mind and don't take um, what's said to them by the institutions, you know, BBC or whichever variant of the of the mainstream media you consume uh, as gospel. You know, for a lot of people mm. growing up, you know, certainly my grandmother, what the church said and what the BBC said and what the news said, etc., was gospel. And and they've slowly eradicated, uh, you know, the, the people's trust based on behavior, not based on the people wanting to resist or not wanting to be led, right. based on right. letting the people down over generation yeah. after generation. Um, and I think for a lot of people, and, and I don't know whether, you know, we're just born at the right time, but um, I suppose we are when you think of somebody born who could have served in the First and Second World War, been unlucky to go through the economic depression and Spanish flu, et cetera, et cetera. You know, yeah. we've lived in a relatively stable time. Obviously, yeah. you know, we've still had the war in, we've had the Troubles, we've had the war in Sarajevo, we've had the war in Iraq, the first conflict, Iraq again, yeah. Afghanistan, where, you know, wherever we are now, Syria, Israel, Ukraine. So, it, it, you know, we haven't actually had trench warfare like you know the early part of the the 20th century but still you know it's been an, an unstable uh time to be a human for me mm -hmm. when i look at it, uh, it i, I, I kind of think there's never been a better time <laughs> you know if you're if, if you're inquisitive you can you know when i was a kid david you only had the library you didn't have yeah you know the internet and the, and the world wide web at your fingertips and and i think you rightly point out it can be a blessing and a curse uh depending on you know, if you can get stuck down a rabbit hole, I don't want to start this debate, but you had, I had a discussion with yeah. someone the other day about flat earth. I'm like, okay. Oh, yeah, I know that one. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not ready for this right now. I've got enough <laughs> on the plate. Um, you you got to work your way to flat earth. Flat earth is <laughs> halfway on the journey, Joey. Don't worry about it just yet. Well, yeah. I, I did study the Truman Show as it, when I did my philosophy mm -hmm. degree and what it meant, and it is an interesting mm -hmm. concept. And again, I don't want to eat yeah. into this show no. because the, la the label me and you, Tim Foyle, hats, David, and, oh, and, and we're far from that. So, so yeah. when I look at it, I think, uh, that's what I've seen even just this week I don't know whether you've seen over, over in the UK Nike have released the New England kit or whatever and oh, yeah uh, in my opinion they've tried to put the bisexual kind of flag tones on yeah. on the on the St George's uh, cross which I just think is really really naive of them you know I get if it's the women's team because most of the women's team like they are in hockey or f in, in um, other sports certainly in football they're quite lesbian. It's quite a lesb like real women kind of don't play football or hockey. Sorry, there will be some real women who do that, but on the whole, it's quite butch, quite lesbian types. Um, and obviously, I think they've sneaked that on the back as a, a kind of nod to the lionesses, and also that kind of big woke di nonsense that's that's yeah. creeping into the world. Do, do you think? Yeah, I saw that about the flag, the, the Nike, the Nike flag, um, which which definitely has overtones of the LGBTQ yeah. plus. It definitely does. And then they come out and they say, "Oh no, it was a playful, uh, a playful twist on the nineteen sixty six World Cup winning team." But it wasn't because if you go, I'm sure you have joy. If you look yeah. at the images of what the guys then were wearing, it was red, white, and blue. That was it. There wasn't yeah. purple. There wasn't all this, as you say, definite hints of. The, the 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 gender war stuff that uh, that Nike are notorious for actually as well. 
Um, so I find that th this is why you see in the past they could have gotten away with that. But because that just broke the other day, there's been so much, so many of us have had a go at them over it. And they're ever so defensive and the FA is defensive and whatnot as well. And again, our ability to push back is faster. And, and so maybe that's good, you know, so they don't get away with it as easy, even though un undoubtedly, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if they'll change it. But um, I also think, again, this is not a conspiracy theory, but I do believe some of this stuff is like rituals of humiliation. And 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 you've you talked about this yourself. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being proud and being English. There's nothing wrong. We're all we all should be proud of our countries and take pride in the flag of the country. And patriotism isn't isn't shouldn't be a dirty word. But but I think that there are people who who despise the fact that people love their country and, and for example, love the honor of playing for their country and representing their country. So what they do is they, they twist it. And that, that Nike sort of uh, badge, uh, uh, to my mind, is a ritual of humility. They want to humiliate the players. And I think that's so no player should go along with it. What do you think? Yeah, look, for, for, for me, I, I think the players now are anything for an easy life. Well, certainly when I see them do interviews afterwards, you know, it, they all, they've they almost become quite political, you know, and, and that was what, mm. um, you know, we, we were talking about the England badge being altered relatively early, saying, you know, if you draw a cartoon about a certain religion, they'll they'll kill you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the, the English certainly. I I feel I can only speak as an Englishman. You know, we're far too tolerant. You know, the, if if you change the Pakistani flag, if you change the French tricolour or the Irish, there'd be a, there'd be an uproar. You know, you change yeah. the colours of of a nation. I think it's whether you want to be playful or not. It's very very disrespectful to the to the to the natives. And you know, as the England national team jersey, it's the biggest sport in this country. It's probably this country's greatest export or, or certainly one of them um, on a global scale and, and, and keeps a lot of NHS beds um, um, capable for people to use due to the tax um, that, they, that they claim back yeah. from, you know, the power of, of the, not only the Premier League, but obviously the three divisions that fall below yeah. that. Yeah. So I, I, I felt it was very insensitive of them. Um, but, but again, I, it, I do believe, David, it's the boil and the frog um you know, what they're trying to do yeah. slowly yeah. since Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're trying to turn the temperature slowly up on the frog so that we don't freak out and rebel. Because luckily for us at this moment in time, we are still the the, the majority. You know, we, we, we might be able to say that in a couple of generations. No. Um, no. And, and we have to be really, really uh, steadfast in protecting our traditions and our cultures. S similarly, as I expect, if I go to any other country in the world, their traditions and their cultures, I have to respect. You know, if I go to Dubai with my pet, my wife, she doesn't, yep. you know, sunbathe topless because it's not against it's against their uh, traditions and practices. Um, do I think it's balmy? You know, if a woman wants to take a top off or a, or, a, or or get her legs mm. out, yeah, absolutely. But you have to respect people's cultures. Um, and and if you go into their lands and you're a visitor in their lands or a guest in their lands, you should do everything you can to respect it. If you're going to move to that country, you, you should do everything you, you, you can to assimilate. Hence yeah. why I went to France yeah. and tried to speak French. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but but, but you're, I mean, Dubai is a good example. I've been, I've been to Dubai several times with my wife. And, and, and as you say, you know, it's a very, it's a different culture to us. But the thing is, you respect that culture. Um, you know, when you're there, you, 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 you go along with it because um, that's just the way it should be. And that's how it should be here in England as well. But here, here's the thing for you. Um, and and it, to me, this is a key point. England is easily the greater part of the United Kingdom. I mean, it's the biggest population by a mile. Yes, you've got Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, but we're much smaller. So I think that the, the, the plan is to essentially break up England, to humiliate the English, to import you know, vast numbers of legal and illegal migrants and to change the face of England forever. Because if we lose England, we lose everything. And I say that as a Northern Irish man, you know, I'm fully aware, Joey, of the fact that if it wasn't for England, um, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland would not enjoy the lifestyle that they do. It's English taxes that pay for it. Now, that doesn't go well down well in some quarters, but that's just a tr that's just the truth of the matter, you know. So if England becomes sort of uh, destroyed, then the whole nation falls, and I think that's the plan. They, the the European Union hated the idea of an of a unified England, 
So that's why they wanted to break it up into different regions. And I think one way or another, that's still the game in play. So it's humiliate England, make England seem like a dirty word, make patriotism seem like a dirty word. And, you know, too many people go along with it. And we should change, change the flag, change the flag on the yeah. football kit. To, to the bisexual flag just to humiliate every man because it's the biggest sport in their country. You know, the England football fan, the, the St. George's Cross, you know, is synonymous with, um, you know, being an Englishman, you know, not being a, yeah. a Britishman, but being an Englishman. Englishman, yeah. A, and, and obviously to change that and put that bisexual coloured flag in there, I think is the ultimate, what you spoke about earlier, these kind of r- r- humiliation uh, rituals. Yeah, rituals, yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, it, it, listen, it's the rainbow laces. It's the BLM. I'm you know, I started BLM. that. You know, I started the rainbow laces. You do. like <laughs> I started that with Stonewall and Paddy Power. And that was that was in, designed entirely to wear as laces in your boots um, to say, look, if there's any gay footballers, you know, one in 10 men are meant to be gay. If there's any gay footballers, you know, we should make it. You know, the, the Lord of Averages says there's a there's a number amongst us, and um, you know we yeah, all yeah. If, if we speak as an old boys club, we we kind of all there's there's a few people I think I could uh, have a have a punt on that would be a bit light on the loafers, but again, as long as they play good football and, and they put the ball Doesn't in the back matter. of the net yeah. or, the, or they keep the ball out the other end, um, yeah, you know, football in that res- respect is a true meritocracy. You know, we want the best players in our team so we can win the game. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't really care about your sexuality. You know, but obviously right. if you didn't. If, if you're in the dressing room recruiting lads and trying to turn them and trying to suck lads off, then we're going to have a problem. And from what I gathered in the women's game, that's rampant. It's absolutely rampant. You know, either the men are shagging the women or the women are trying to recruit and, and sleep with other women. You know, one Premier League uh, WSL side has got um, eight players in the team that are partners. How 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 do I pick a team sensibly? Because I might be leaving your partner out and not even know. Yeah, but but he, here's a question for you. I I've never I, I used to watch you know I follow ten of different sports, but tennis there was a disproportionate apparent uh, number of lesbian women playing tennis. Never really understood why that was. But th- now you move it into different sports like football, women's football, and women's rugby and whatnot. And again, you see this, and it's strange. I, I don't understand the overrepresentation. Because you know it's a it's it, it is a minority and and I, no one wants to be discriminated uh, discriminated against anyone but you know I don't understand how one you know let's say ten percent becomes eighty percent do you well well this is the thing as I say I think I think there is probably Preto's law eighty twenty I think mm. it's eighty percent kind of butch women and kind of lesbian types against twenty percent probably not just quite athletic sporty types and I think yeah. You know, the 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 more the profile of the WSL raises and the Lioness raises, I think you get more kind of normal quotations, Mark, girls. But most girls in school don't they don't want to play football. You know, it's, it's only no. the tomboys or usually the butch butch lesbians who want to. You know, most yeah. girls in school don't like the rough and tumble. You know, that the, the, they go a completely different way. I mean, most women, most women don't like women's football. Don't like football in general. Couldn't give a rat's ass about football. You know, that's just not what motivates them. But, you know, bang the Kardashians on or the shopping channel, all of a sudden they come alive. You know, they have they have a different, you know, they wrote the book, David, the um, men are from yeah. Venus, women are from Mars, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, even those lines are being blared at this moment. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. We, I mean, can't, we can't say what a woman is anymore. Well, cert- cert- certainly if you're the leader of the Labour Party at the moment. He's turned, he's turned on that, though, to be fair to him. Well, he, he, well, he has, but he, he well, he has and he hasn't. He's agreed that ninety five or was it ninety nine percent of women don't have a penis. Well, actually, no, it's a hundred percent. And secondly, he's unable to tell us if a trans woman is is a woman or not. So, yeah, I mean, it's awkward. I mean, the thing about him is he's trying to be all things to all men. And if there's one lesson you learn in life is that you can't ever do that. You've got to just say the thing that you believe. But if you're leading a political party, yes, you have to make compromises. Yeah. Labour are absolutely woke to the core. I mean, once they get in, Joey, are we going to have fun times ahead? Because oh, God, you, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, free speech is going to be under massive threat, just like it is in Scotland at the moment. First uh, of April, the hate crime law comes in and the police Scotland are going to be uh, checking out comics and plays and actors for saying the wrong thing. 
So that's going to be. Did, did you say in North Korea there, David? Was that North Korea? <laughs> yeah, North, North Korea. Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. Which is twinned with Scotland. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, they, used to, they used to have yeah. Jimmy Cranky, um, J- Jimmy Cranky as the leader before she it got did. caught funneling money off for a motorhome. <laughs> Well, yeah, but now that now they've got Humza, Humza Yosef, who, yeah. who I I supported his leadership bid because I knew he would be absolutely comedy gold, and as he's proven to be that. But I mean, they're going to get what anyway. Look, come the uh, the general election, the SNP are going to get walloped. The Tories are going to be essentially extinct, and you and I and others are going to have to cope with a world where Labour call the shots. And I'm not sure that's going to be good. Any, it's not going to be. Any I mean, better. I mean, it could it be any worse than 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 nah. the previous nah. 13 years of Conservatives? Like, um, but to be fair, it always can get worse. Let's let's be honest, it always can get worse. It can. Yeah, you see, you see you know, you, the, the song goes, "Things can only get better." But I yeah. learned that actually, things can only get worse, <laughs> which isn't great to think about too hard. But I think. We look back on the Rishi Sunak, uh, Boris Johnson times. These were the golden Liz years. Liz Truss, you forgot about the great Liz Truss. Liz as well. Yeah, well, she, I mean, you know, I, I blinked and she'd gone. But uh, <laughs> no, I, I think the, the 24, 2024 is an interesting year, Joey, because there's, I think, about half the world goes to the polls. You know, the States goes, we go. Um, so many countries are, are, are having yeah, the, the Russians. The Russians have just had one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Russians have had one, and uh, and and Putin got into the horror of Rishi Sunak, which I thought was funny because at least people voted for uh, Putin. And yeah, they might have had the gun to the red life, but they did well, they might have had. But I mean, well, you need to have a gun to your head to vote for uh, Rishi Sunak, I would suggest. But yeah, no, you need but... a you need a pulling if you if you vote for that big. <laughs> Well, I mean, as I said, th- 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 we're going to go through this amazing change whereby um, th- th- there's going to be a changing of the guard, I think, certainly here in the UK anyway, maybe across in the States, maybe elsewhere as well. And that's going to present us with a whole new set of circumstances that um, we're going to have to deal with. But, you know, we're the right people to deal with it. I, I think, Joey, if we could withstand the COVID stuff, we can probably withstand anything. I'm saying that might be wrong. Yeah, well, again, we're a resilient people. We 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 uh, we survived the Luftwaffe's bombardment. Um, so I'm pretty sure, you know, we we we're, we're made of stronger stuff than you think we are. And then the the thing that pleases me, David, is since I've stepped this side of the fence, been kind of red pilled, as they call it. Yeah, um, yeah. It's it's amazing when you come out of the kind of football bubble and you open your eyes and you're like, oh my god, these people are like batshit crazy. Like, you know, <laughs> some of the stuff that they've just accepted as gospel from, you know, imbeciles. You know, if you're listening to Matt Hancock and you're taking what he mm. says at oh, face yeah. value, um, you know, uh, I think you've got to be relatively uh, simple-minded. You know, that yeah. it, you know, I think we all, in the initial part of that COVID thing, all wanted to do the right thing, didn't want to, you know, spread the virus, etc. But I think the longer and longer it went on, I think I think the more people have seen the lights, you know, more people I think have been red pilled via what they tried to do, the exercise of control and you know yeah. misinformation and disinformation. Um that which obviously then led to an experimental vaccine vaccination, which is mm-hmm. obviously only for profit. They've only done that to make, you know, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, uh, Johnson and Johnson, or you know, if I yeah, haven't but, na- yeah. named any of them. Yeah. Um but that was all to line their own pockets, you know. Forget the um, the PPE um, and the track and trace money that was yeah. absolutely yeah. siphoned off to uh, you know offshore accounts. So I, I believe I don't know about you. I always believe that like you know, truth will out. The truth will come out in the end. I do. Yeah, I, I, I do. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and my my concern is obviously with um with with the current government and and the incumbent government. It looks like. You know, both have got fingerprints all over um, murder weapons, literally. Yep. Um, and yep. I think it's bipartisan in terms of it looks like they're all going to cover each other's back and kind of say, oh, look, can we just draw a line in the sand? And, you know, oh, sorry, we didn't mean to do that, even though we've taken millions from, um, yes. you know, the, the, the pharmaceutical companies. And I, I don't know about you, but I'm hoping at some point, you know, these people are held accountable. Yeah, absolutely. And if, but I think you're right. I think the current government and the incumbent government will keep denying it. Um, I, I've had uh, I've had Andrew Bridgen, who's been the only I mean, Andrew, Andrew went along with it in the early days. He took the jobs. He was vaccine injured, Joey. He got 
bad injury as a consequence and he started to speak up and as time's gone on he's spoken up more and more and out of 650 MPs only one guy started to challenge and ask questions about you know the the adverse reactions and all of that and I you know I spoke them back in December and uh it's a lonely station if you go to your place of work which parliament is for him and there's 650 of you and you're the only one talking about the biggest issue of our times and you're sneered at your party deselection um you you know your 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 booed uh, life's made difficult for you I, I respect him because he spoke up and you know i would just say what what where's the rest of them like as andrew pointed out there's not a constituency in the uk where there's, there, you know, people haven't been injured and died, actually. There's, you know, all that has been happening. So how come 649 MPs don't want to talk about it, Joey? Why is that? Well, we, we don't have uh, legal ways to uh, fund and lobby uh, politicians in this country, but we're not stupid. You know, like the states as a way of mm. kind of filling the pockets of politicians and, and it doesn't look like you can become president or, or a senator or a governor unless you're uh, working for somebody unless you've got a lot yep. of a lot of money obviously yep. in this country you know we thought we were separate from that as we do from north korea we think we're very very free <laughs> and we might find out very soon how, how close we are to those um, yeah. communist uh, countries that we uh we we, we uh, can see into the far east so so for me you know the, the thing that i seen with andrew and I, I retweeted andrew today actually i don't know lots about him but I seen a few weeks ago that his wife attacked him in, in one of the papers. I was like, what's yeah. going on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, 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 as as you well understand, there's always a backstory to everything. And, and Andrew's a really interesting guy. He'd be well worth your while bringing him on um, because he's he's been on a journey. He's been like everyone else. You see, I, I don't think none of us is perfect. And, and we, you know, I, I like to think even at, at my point in life, you still learn things, Joey. You know, you're not so clever that you know all the informations. So as he's learned more and more stuff about the jabs and as he's spoken to more and more world medical experts, he, he's very, very when you hear him speak about it, I think he's very impressive. And he can, ra I mean, like even, to, I don't know if you saw that letter he posted today. On yeah, social I've seen it, yeah. Yeah, and, and I mean, he's posting the fact that if you take that young age group of uh, um, uh, young men between, was 18 and 29, and you look at the percentage increase in a form of brain tumours that they get, it's gone through the roof. And then women between 30 and 39, again, uh, for, for breast tumours, that's also gone up. And Andrew is the guy that's, you know, that, that's leading this uh, quest for, I think, justice. I mean, you know, from day one, I thought what we need is Nuremberg too. We yeah. need to bring the villains, put them on, the, you know, put them to, on the stand, all of them, and uh, from Boris Johnson all the way down, uh, and, uh, and and hold them responsible for what they did. Here, Here's the thing that sickens me. I don't know what you think, but these politicians, you know, they have their, I mean, Boris Johnson at his moment, Matt Hancock at his moment, and then the different regions, we had their equivalents. And they bullied us and they terrorized us and they locked us down. And they, you know, if you, if you, didn't, if you didn't go along with the regime, you, you had a tough time. But they've all gone now. And the people that, you know, they've all either slunk off into obscurity or into well-paid, uh, uh, quango jobs or whatever. But the victims are still there, Joey. The victims, you know, the people with the myocarditis and the uh, the the uh, Guillain barry syndrome, whatever, like they'll live with that for the rest it of their lives. Long COVID, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do you know what I mean? Like, that's not, not what... only that, don't forget, they shut the economy down. You know, they furloughed people, they, they broke a lot of small businesses up, you know, they caused a lot of. Problems with people in the aftermath then by inflation rising, you know, cost of energy going up, uh, yep. cost of living going up. You know, they, they literally turn the screw on, on the, uh, you know, on, on the normal people, the working class people. And again, the thing for me is, you know, I see Nancy Pelosi in the States and I'll get to you on that in, in a minute. You know, obviously manipulating or, you know, looks like her and her husband are very shrewd. Uh, yeah, investors or fantastic, yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah, which yeah. stinks of white collar cr crime if ever I've saw it. But also the yeah. other side of that, you know, our politicians, whether that was Michael Gove, who has a history of you know cocaine abuse, it looks like he was a bit of a 
Um, Wolf in sheep's clothing. It looks like he's had a bit of a sham marriage to keep the fact he's a bit light on the loafers under the under the rug when it was unacceptable, obviously, to be a politician and be gay. Which which obviously now it's not. You can be anything you want now. You know you can you can yep. be a unicorn yep. if you want, etc. And then the other one was Reese Mogg. You know, obviously, new yep. Brexit was coming, and we'll talk about Brexit in a minute because I'm interested to you to get your take on that. Um, but Reese Mogg moved all his hedge fund out to Ireland because he knew it was going to obviously benefit him massively. So I'm like, yep. if you if you did that in any any business, you know, or you'd be accused of. Um, you know, you know, white collar crime. You'd go, to, you'd go to jail for it. You'd be inside the yeah. trading or whatever that be. And yet, these That's people right. are walking around and getting even more um, um, uh, higher, higher echelons of of the kind of institutions that they've ripped off and stolen from. That, the, it's, 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 it's shocking. Yeah, but that's the way it works. Though the, the in term, I mean, I consider the political caste to be essentially a den of thieves. Um, oh yes, they talk very properly, and like Reese Mogg and whatnot, and there's the old Etonian angle to them. But but fundamentally, um, I just think they're 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 gangsters who have gotten themselves into these positions, and they'll always take care of themselves. Like I I find it sort of galling that they award themselves these uh, salary increases, for example, every year, at the same time as the you pointed out, Joey, uh, if, uh, Sunak. And uh, Johnson, they wrecked this British economy, particularly small business. Big business did okay out of it. But small business people, which is the backbone of Britain, were made to suffer. And then Rishi Sunak is a temerity to, to put out a thing the other day saying he saved 14 million jobs with his furlough oh, scheme. God, yeah. I mean, yeah, did you see that? I mean, eat, eat out to help out. Yeah, that, that was a good yeah, idea. Yeah, eat out to help out. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they, 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 I think they've got such a brass neck. And either they're just completely evil or they're completely stupid or somewhere in between. Uh, but the point about it is some of us see right through them and we have to keep calling them out. You know, because, I think they're um, so detached yeah, from reality. You know, don't forget, they go to those kind of Oxbridge schools, um, usually yeah. have to uh, do a humiliation ritual in terms of sleep, sleeping with a dead pig or something like that, or whatever yeah. them bull Bullingdon boys, Johnson uh, Lord, yeah. Lord Cameron, Cameron, fucking hell. Lord Cameron, Lord yeah. Cameron now, yeah, he's back. Yeah, um, he's back. And and, and that, that's the scary thing about it. it. It's almost, as you said, it's almost like a bit of a cabal. I, I don't think, I'll level with you, I don't think they're that clever. Like, like you know, Matt Hancock couldn't get away with uh, having an affair. In, you know, he's not that smart. He's, he's actually a bit of a tool when you think about it, to get caught um, mm. that easily um, and then obviously start crying on the TV or whatever. I, mm. I think we give them far too much credit. You know, they couldn't even hide their own MP expenses scandal when they all had two houses and they were all claiming for family members to be secretaries and overpaying them. And as I said to you, if you did that, if you were working in a business and you did that in terms of pumped up your expenses, you, you, you'd be either sacked or you'd, you'd, you'd go to jail or face prosecution for obviously, you know, stealing yeah. from your employer because that, that's what you're doing. And they are employed by us. We, I don't get how we feel that we work for them and that we have to cow out to them and bow down to them. And well, that's this, right. Yeah, this is what scares them about Twitter and social media. And I think Twitter yeah. specifically is it allows yeah. us all to connect and it allows the the rebellion, the resistance to build. And you know what did Oliver Cromwell took the country with ten thousand troops? Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah. as an Irishman, and a, you, it sounds like I don't. Uh, uh, your, your Brexit, Donald Trump. I'm pretty sure your Rangers and part, well, all for the union. I don't think you're a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> not, not particularly. But having said that, I, I'm not really monarchist. I'm not okay. really. I, 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 I've become. So, do you I support the Ireland rugby team? Are you an Ireland rugby man? I, I, I support the best rugby team. The team playing the best rugby, which okay. is Ireland, has been for about. Mm, a decade or so now, you know. Yeah, I think good. Yeah. Irish, Irish rugby guys do really, really well. Um, you know, uh, but I was. But that is that is the, that is the two countries together. You know, you've obviously got the south and the north coming together. Yeah. I think Ireland. And I'm going to. It's going to sound controversial playing for Rick, but I'm like Ireland's an island. But then people argue and go, well, you know, look at England, Scotland, and Wales are all on the same. Yeah. Island virtually, and obviously we're, we're, we're all. I don't think yeah. we'll ever become one island. So. Maybe the ship sailed on that based on, you know, the, the damage that's been done historically by the aristocracy again. Well, do, do you know something? One of the weird things about COVID is that 
up until COVID times, I would have had maybe different political views to my friends, say, in the Irish Republic. But the, the one thing that they and I had in common was that I had good uh, Republican friends say in Dublin, and they admired the fact that the Brits had voted to get out of the EU, and they wanted Ireland to get out of the EU so that Ireland could choose its own destiny, Joey. Which I so I, I you know we we agreed in that and uh, actually had commonality in that. But then along came COVID, and actually things were pretty tough. For people in the south of Ireland, in the Irish Republic, because the Irish government were even more tyrannical than the British government. Were they like the Canadian and New Zealand? Yeah, uh, the, yeah, yeah, they absolutely, yeah, they were really bad. Yeah, it was tyrants. Really bad tyrants. And so I became very friendly with, with, with lots of um, devout Irish Republican people who were now saying, listen, we don't care about flags. We want to be able to have our bodily autonomy respected. We want to live our own lives. We don't want to be told what to do. And, and, and so in a way, I live in a world where there's no flags in some ways. The things that matter to me is freedom, individual responsibility, the right to... Um, you know, protect our families, uh, the right to have a decent income as well. These are the things that matter to me. And in some regards, I couldn't care less what the flag is because sometimes... Yeah. Or the religion, are, yeah. yeah or, they're, or they're absolutely the religion. Or the man in the sky, yeah, man in the sky. Yeah, yeah, does it, exactly. Sometimes I think these, Joey, are put in place to conquer and divide us, you know. So, you know, like the Islam, Islam, for example, I mean, there's a lot of stuff there where, like I was very pleased in the early days of covid that the British, and in particular England, the, the, the Muslim community weren't queuing up to take their jobs. And I thought that was great. I, I totally respected them uh, because they, they had good historical reasons not to trust the government. Um, I, I admire that. Whereas, you know, the Church of England uh, flock were queuing, you know, three deep to go in and get the Fauci out. So um, yeah. I... I they, they, yeah, they, weren't, they weren't just queuing. They were... They were pressurising other people to get it as kind mm. of a, a version of blasphemy back in the day. If you don't right. get it, you're blasphemous. Like, shut the <laughs> fuck up. Not getting it. That's right. I think I think it was Justin Welby said. Justin know, Welby, yeah. I know. I, well, I mean, there's... Repatriations. A... Yeah. I mean, the 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 the, the, the thing is that um, I think we should, as a, generally speaking as people, we should try to unify and not let the those on high divide and conquer us up into different tribes you know i'm for the freedom tribe that's it don't yeah. care about anything else yeah and you judge people on on the merits what they like as a person are they present yeah. it in front of you are they good or bad you know what color yeah. skin they've got what gender they are what what sexuality they are what religion they are who cares you know there's well, good and well, bad in everything yeah, well, the thing is, you shouldn't care. But in, in recent years, Joey, I mean, the whole, you know, the race thing's been driven into us, the gender thing's been driven into us. And, and I, wa I want to live and let live. That's my natural instinct. I'm naturally just like libertarian minded. I, I'm happy for people to get on, but I'm not going to be told. I will not be told to accept things that are, are not real. Do you know? Yeah. So, for example, I'm afraid there are only two genders. That's it. End off. You can pretend. I tell you, Joy. I, I, years ago, back in the BBC years, I remember they brought me into the studio, uh, and they had this was by 2014, so it was a good time, ten decade ago, and they had a a trans person there, and this person was male, but they had trans. Well, they 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 were very plausibly female. Let's put it like that. Not and, a bad looking one. Like you see them in Thailand. There's some of the lady boys. You couldn't tell the difference. I haven't been there, Joey. I'll take your word. I'm telling now. you, mate. Hey, if if yeah. you want to go for a recce, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll come back and say, "Yeah, you're not wrong there." Well, well, well this person looked very plausibly uh, female, and the voice was female as well. Uh, and and the BBC were they, they set me up to say, "Well, you know, do you accept that this person is 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 female?" And look, I, I, I my response was, "Look, look, I respect this person to be whatever they say that they are." In the same way as if I'm walking down the street and I meet someone and they tell me they're from the planet Mars, they're a Martian, I'll probably smile at them and say, well, you know, that's great. I'm glad to hear that. But I don't believe it. I don't mm. actually think you're from Mars. And I didn't think that the person in the studio who was presenting as female was female, you know. Um, and, and, and I thought we lived in a world where we could respectfully disagree. 
but you can't. If you disagree on the gender ideology, you're the worst part. I mean, it's going to become a, a crime, I think. If we say this on social media in a, maybe a year's time, you know, we, we could all be in a big prison together because uh, I think they might come for us. You have well, to. Well, if we can't say it, it sounds like we're in a big prison anyway. Ah, good point. Good. Well, I think we are. I think, well, I think we, 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 well, we might as well resist. We might as well form a resistance if we're here, might we? Do you know what I mean? We, well, might, we might as well uh, stick it to the man. Well, well, I think so, you know, and and, and so, um, and again, of course, you know, there, there are these little tiny minority groups who are dictating everything to the vast majority of us. Like, for example, a lot of gay people, you, you'll understand this, a lot of gay people don't have any truck with the LGBTQ plus plus narrative they don't you know they just want to live their lives and oh no uh, there's, there's a there's a civil war going on from as i said i started the rainbow laces campaign with stonewall and paddy power it, it came out of a an idea i think that uh either one of those had and, and there was only obviously yeah. one person one person fucking bar me enough to do it i said i said i'm not bothered if they think i'm gay I, it's it's a it's a yeah it, it's an up it's an upgrade on what they normally call me if they were calling me queer or faggot i'm like that's quite nice you're being quite civil towards me in a football stadium yeah. Yeah. um so I, and i've got a gay uncle so i was like look i'll 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 do it for you it's no problem so we obviously start it um it's never mentioned or referenced i get no credit for it because it's become their woke thing so so this is why i'm fighting back because i believe i lowered the drawbridge to the gay community in football mm. Now, a load of trannies and a load of woke and a load of DEI and race hustlers have come over that bridge and yep. we can have it. So I'm like, hang on a minute, right? We need to we need to pull a drawbridge up here while we figure out who's really trying to contribute here and who's just being, you know, a piece of shit and trying to profiteer and trying to cause friction and, and uh, divide people to, to their own benefit, which is what I see um, whenever a tune in um you know you just see people with these agendas to yeah you, you know you're racist i mean you know i won't name the names but i'm, I'm obviously in a bit of a, a civil one and, and one of the people i'm in a civil one with is is the biggest race card player ever um and, and obviously i think at this moment in time david it, it if you're white it's almost like racism doesn't exist against white people it's just like you yeah. can't be racist towards white people even if you're actively discriminating against them in their own in their own professions or in their own uh areas because you you want to fill quotas for either ECG or you know woke box ticking purposes you, you're not appointing people based on the merit is this the best person for the job you're appointing them based on um okay this is a really good thing for us to do to give this black person or this this woman or this lesbian woman a job i mean if yeah. you're black Lesbian and an ex-footballer. Now you, you you're never going to be out of work. <laughs> yeah, you'll never go home. No matter what you say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, it's. I mean, I was having a chat there last week with a guy called Tim Davies, who's an ex RAF fast jet fighter. He basically trains the Red Arrows and people like that. And uh, Tim, basically, he left in 2018 because he could see that all this, you know, like if you're a fighter pilot, that, that has to be done in meritocracy. You know what I mean? You've got to yeah. be the very best. You well, can't Boeing, be Boeing are finding out that now. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, if you have a device, I mean, I want if I get on an aircraft, I want the bits to be able to stay together at 35,000 feet. But Boeing have found that um, the RAF. They cannot function properly if if you if you basically want to like for example the RAF want to have twenty percent of personnel to be women twenty percent to be women now I think it's three percent at the moment so the only way they can do that Joey actively discriminate against white males and and I think you know that's wrong discriminate I it's, it's funny isn't it any People discrimination's like, wrong for it's me wrong. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. And yet we're, we're accused of being the extremists and we're saying, no, we just want the best person, best qualified person to get the job. Don't care about their skin color or anything, you know, best qualified, best person to do the job should get the job. But if if you're, if, it, if it's in uh, like say Boeing, as you say, um, the consequences of that, of having diversity hires fitting the wheels or the wings or whatever, and then they fall off a bit scary. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it, I always say to people whenever I'm debating it, I say, okay, well, look, if you're going for heart surgery tomorrow and I say, look, there's a black fella here who, who you've got a 92% success rate, um, 
There's a a, a a Pakistani lady who gives you a 97% success rate or a white doctor who gives you an 89% success rate. Which person are you going to take? Um, I don't know whether you lost... Uh, did you lo lose me there or did you get me? Yeah, I just lost you. Lost just you. lost you. Yeah, I might, I might just dip in and out my signal. Um, as long as you got me now. I said, if you were going for open heart surgery in the morning and you had uh, a black doctor who had a 92% uh, success rate, you know, you had a Pakistani lady who had a 97% success rate and you had the white uh, wasp kind of uh, British doctor who give you a 90% yeah. success rate, which doctor would you use? Then everyone says, obviously, the Pakistani lady, 97%. Yeah. And I'm the, like, in every other, in every job, in everything you come into, obviously, you know, the, the, there's a natural bias towards people you know. You know, people who look a bit like you, whether that's a family member or somebody that looks a bit like you. But mm. but ultimately, after a period of time, you need the best candidate for the job to get the job because you, you know the ta the amount of time you waste trying to get people who aren't skilled up to up to speed versus someone who's already qualified for the job and and, and knows they've got the job because they're the best candidate. You know, a lot of people out there now are, are sitting here, David, and they know their only reason they're in in situ is because they tick a box. And I think we send the wrong message to not only the next generation, but future generations. If we allow, you know, woke nonsense to degrade our culture and our society of work hard, be a good person and make something of yourself in the world. Absolutely. Yeah. People shouldn't be allowed to play the race card or the gender card or, 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 you know, the, the, the I'm a, I'm a socially oppressed minority victim. They shouldn't be allowed to play that. It, it should be based entirely on meritocracy. It should be. But but the problem is it's not. That's the real problem. The, you know, I mean, you, I mean, you've highlighted it, Joey, very admirably, in my opinion, in terms of some of the comments you've made about um, football commentary in, 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 in certain areas who are they're embarrassing they're cringe and yet they're the ones trotting out their so-called expertise i find it so embarrassing do you know yeah well that that's the big thing for me that that you know our sport is a true meritocracy you know it doesn't matter who your mum and dad are who your nan and granddad are mm. who your aunt and uncle yeah. are it, it's about how good you are as an individual in the framework of the team so in that regard you know if it doesn't matter what goal you know i've been in trouble loads of times they've wanted to kick me out of the team out of football but because mm. i've been one of the best players i've played you know that that shows you, you no know, matter my behavior they played me because they want to win a game on a saturday and, and yeah. you know i was there better or i increased their chances of doing that now the problem we've got is as soon as those lads stop playing football the meritocracy goes out the window and you know, these are people who, you know, have given the bodies and, uh, you know, put the bodies literally, you know, when, when people are talking about CTE and these, you know, the dangers of long term, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, brain injuries for, for ex-players. Um, you know, there's certainly a lot of research done on that now and, it, and it's pointing in an un, in, in favorable, uh, unfavorable direction for people who head the ball a lot. Um, yeah. So these, yeah. these guys pretty much put the bodies on the line to build these clubs and sell these stadiums out. And then when they get to retirement age, they're discriminated against to fill ethnic and woke quotas, specifically because the white and the middle aged. And I'm like, what color do you think people who were born in Britain with like four days of sunshine above 22 degrees are going to be? You know, the patriots, the native people are going to have white skin um, yeah. and to discriminate against them, not because they're not good enough, but to be discriminate against anybody for any reason, in my opinion, is wrong. And it's the same if if they were saying, look, there's got, we're not going to have any gingers in the game. I'd be saying this is wrong. You know, you 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 have to you have to show people that if you work hard and you and you dedicate and you, you you're desperate to take a job, um, that you have a pathway towards that. You know, I'm, I'm speaking to guys now, Andrew Gold from the Heretics podcast, who wanted to be the, the next Louis Theroux, he told me. And he said, the reason the BBC got rid of him is they said to him, look, you can't become Louis because you're, you're white and we don't want the next Louis Theroux to be white. It's just outrageous. It's like, that's the state broadcaster. That's where the tax, you know, the, the, the TV, sorry, the TV license payers money goes. And they're actively discriminate, discriminating against the native population. Um, the, the, the it's crazy. I'll tell you, I'll tell you I, so I, 
I've got a couple of young grandkids, very, very young, like three, right? And with them. And and it's amazing to see, even in kids' car- cartoons and stuff like that, on British TV, you can see this ideology creeping in. You know, you can see over-representation of certain ethnicities within that. And you just think to yourself, you know, look, Britain might not be perfect, Joey, but, you know, broadly speaking, this country was built by white. England's, what, 80% white British. Where I live, it's 97. Scotland's 98. Wales is 99. Um, but yet you wouldn't think that, would you? And that's because the wokists have, got, have grabbed the culture and they're pretending that it's totally different to what it is. And I think that is something we have to, you know, point out and challenge back on and say, why are you misrepresenting what Britain is? You know, like, like you talked earlier about 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 um, Saudi or sorry, about Dubai. I mean, everyone knows what Dubai is and what it's like. But Britain, used, it was pretty clear what we were, but they're changing us into something else. And I resent that. I really do. And that doesn't make me an extremist. I think that just makes me, you know, just an ordinary person who wants to keep all the things that made Britain great. Well, well, it, you know, it reached points, as I say, I, th- I think it's, and I don't know about you, I think when I watch the States, you know, with Claudine Gay getting done for plagiarism and obviously the DI yeah. kind of, yeah. the, the pushback on going too far into DI, which is obviously what the States have done. I, I think we're seeing the snap back there and obviously like, like we did with the Black Lives Matter and the George Floyd stuff, there will be a tsunami, a ripple effect that it's these shores. How big that wave is, I'm not sure. But certainly off the last few weeks and months, um, I think the, the wave's bigger than what the woke crew felt it was. You know, hence this reason, uh, this week we've got a big pushback against the Nike kit. And and another thing where I thought, David, we reached uh, po- uh, peak lunacy, peak wokeness was uh, when they labelled the countryside racist. I don't know whether you've seen this. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, countryside so racist, apparently. Yeah, it makes ethnic people are horrified when they go to the countryside. Well, here's the thing. They don't go to the countryside very much, you know. But if they did, they'd find it just the way that you and I, I, I live in the countryside, I've got to say, maybe like yourself. And um, I don't see an awful, a tremendous number of ethnic people, but there's nothing to stop them coming to the countryside. You know, um, there, there's, there's no barriers. It's just maybe ethnic people don't particularly enjoy it. But, but again, it's not it, racist. It, it, if they found it, you know, they would love it because you can't help but, but enjoy being out yeah. in nature. You know, that again, if they don't want to assimilate into our culture, you know, you, 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 you can't blame us. You can't say our countryside's racist because you don't like walking in it. Like, like, no, it's, it's not like it's not like when you're walking through like one of the national parks or one of the national forests, you know, you start getting racist abuse or monkey chants or something out the uh, off the owls. Like, come on, <laughs> uh, it, 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 you know, it, it's peak no. lunacy. I mean, you know, the problem with the British people and it might be different in Northern Ireland, you'll tell me, is I feel we're too tolerant. You know, you, you, we're very, very tolerant people um, up until a point. And I, and I think, you know, when the armed forces are in the state they're in and when the country's in the state it's in, um, the, the the social services are in the state they're in. Um, I just think people have pretty much just gone, okay, we've tried it your way. Your way doesn't work. Um, common sense now is going to prevail. You can't keep telling us ups, down and downs up. Um, and, and I think the rational thinking man on the street now has an ability, thankfully, you know, due to Elon Musk. And I didn't realize the significance of Musk buying Twitter or X, as it's now called. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I dread to think... Um, you know, because I was quite big on Twitter in the early days and then I went away from it because it was playing and it was causing me aggro. Um, and I've yep. kind of always monitored it. And then it did go really woke and I've uh, seen a lot of uh, censoring on all the big social media platforms. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then thankfully, you know, I don't do Rumble or some of these other ones where I think there's a bit more liberty. But thankfully, Musk has bought Twitter and, and um, allowed people to, to, to tell their truth. You know, not everybody's uh, right, but I think it's very important to allow opposing ideas to be discussed and and maybe even have conflict points in them so that we can, you know, resolve it and and maybe politely agree to disagree, but but move forward. At this point, you're either pro Ukraine or pro Russia. If you if you're pro Russia, you're a Putin sympathizer and a Nazi. You're either yeah. Hamas or Israel. No, like, no, I'm fucking English. I'm worried about our schools. I'm worried about me. Yeah. Me, me. 
you know, my grandmother's energy bills. I'm not worried about a war in a far, far land. Do you know, Joey, that's exactly, yeah, that's exactly my view. That's exactly my view. My view is that, you know, Ukraine, Russia, sort it out. I, I don't care. Uh, Israel, Gaza, get on with it. I'm concerned about this little country of ours. It's it's not Ukrainian borders I care about, Joey. It's British borders I care mm. about. Um, it's 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 British lives. It's uh, you know. All, I mean, for example, uh, another example I'll give you. We've given I don't know how many billions to who are, uh, Zelensky, who I consider to be a grifting crook. But that's just my opinion. Well, his um, mate just got the first electric uh, Rolls Royce, yeah. hasn't he? So well done to them. Well done I to did. them. I, I tell you, I put, I, put, I, put a tweet out. I put a tweet out in that and I got 10 million views. <laughs> so, yeah, to me, that, that was... Uh, and then all, all the 77th 7, Brigaders were on saying, source, what is your key point? So, the, the, so the, I, I don't want to get involved in necessarily that much beyond our borders. And we've given billions to Zelensky. And at this point in time... Um, th there was a case there you might have seen yesterday, um, and this relates to women who were um, uh, born in the 50s, in the 1950s, whose retirement age was suddenly bossed essentially by an extra 10 years. And so um, th that put those women in difficult position, right? We need to give these women we need to pay them maybe three grand maybe as much as 10 grand and position are saying oh we can't afford that we can give ski for or these uh you know these these fashionable wars so i'm very like you and and so i'm not getting drawn into oh who do you support ukraine or or, or, or Russia. It, it's a false choice, Joey. You're dead, right? And, and I wish more of us would resist being... People say to me, choose a side. And I'm saying, oh, yeah, my, Britain, the British side, yeah. this country. That's it. I'm, you know, I'm sorry about all the wars. I don't want to see Ukrainian Ukrainians killed. Don't want to see Russians killed. Similarly, Gazans and, you know, uh, Israelis. I don't want to see that. But what am I going to do about it? Do you know what I mean? What am I going to do? What can our country do? Well, we should do, stop spending money in these places and spend it in Britain, in my view. Yeah. And, and, and again, you know, we're certainly when, you know, we're struggling to fill potholes in the roads and we're struggling to, um, you know, make sure we look after the social services that a lot of people with disabilities and, and um, yep. a lot of people who've got family members who've got, you know, got old age or, you know, care homes or whatever um, that, that need to be looked after. And obviously to send X amount of billion, I think, to Ukraine after they've wasted X amount of billion on track and trace and, and feeding the cronies yep. down the PPE uh, um, VIP yep. lanes. Is is absolutely disgusting, you know. It, it well, really, really is. It, it is, and again, going back to something you said, it's our money. It's 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 not their money to give. It's your money. It's my anyone who pays taxes. They're taking our taxes and splaffing them up against the wall. In, you know, in Ukraine and, and other places around the world. I mean, David Cameron can't seem to get enough of our taxes to spend overseas. But I, I don't. I, I oppose all of that. I'd like it say, spent. On, on on our vulnerable people in the in the UK and the fact that our social services are falling apart, the NHS is totally broken. Um, I think it's you know, gone now. I think the NHS is gone. Yeah, yeah. From, from I, I think that, gather. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I mean, and that's one hundred and sixty-seven that... billion a year. That isn't it? it? Is it is? Yep. And and, no. and if you want to if you want to see a doctor, uh, you mean the 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 GP service has fallen apart as well since COVID. Um, so all the doctors oh, yeah. are on average of what one hundred and sixteen grand salary basic plus all their bonuses. And uh, uh, yeah, and, and and what they were getting paid per jab, per jab. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I ch I ch I checked out my local surgery, uh, and they've got. I know how many people's on their their list, so to speak. And I was working on the basis that if they got let's say 90% of the people in that surgery to take a jab or two, that was probably an extra half a million to be shared amongst four partners. Lovely jubbly, Joey. Lovely jubbly. Yeah. Never mind the consequences, of course. I mean, never mind the Hippocratic Oath. First, do no harm. 
Oh, never mind that, because there's lots of money to be made. So I think the whole... But, but don't don't forget, they used to tell you that smoking was all right when they were getting paid by the tobacco companies. Yeah, go home, have 20 ciggies, that'll be no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, see, I, I never, up until 2020, I was so stupid. I believe well doctors I was in with the doctor for my annual checkup and he said, Oh, David, there's um there's a new flu jab up. You should get jab, you should get it. So he gave me the flu jab and I never I, you know I hadn't had the bloody flu. Within two weeks I came down with what I now look back as basically vaccine reaction. And I never taken one since. And that was 2018. 2020 comes along. Obviously, it didn't take the COVID jabs. And now, Joey, I can't conceive there's any circumstances that I would take any vaccine for anything because I don't believe in it. All right. So if you were going to the Amazon jungle to go and meet, you know, some ancient tribe or whatever, because, you know, you, you've ended up on some mad expedition for Nat yeah. National Geographic, yeah. Would would you take, you know, if they said, look, there's going to be, you know, there's the X yellow fever or something, would no. you take the vaccine? See, I would. No, no. If I was going I to a country where there was a high risk of malaria or whatever, I would take it. I'm not vaccine. You know, I'm not I'm not anti-vax. Even with what I know now, you know, Anthony Fauci and I haven't read uh, Robert Kennedy Jr.'s book, but I do intend to get to it. But people are saying to me, don't read it, it. Yeah. because it will boil your piss you know it's outrageous you know obviously the the, the medical companies not only um uh using live experimentation on human beings but the fact that those human beings were born into care homes in america and and obviously you know if they weren't mm -hmm. already yep. unlucky enough to be left behind by the parents then the last thing they needed with these pharmaceutical companies in injecting them with all different types of me me you know experimental medication that would would obviously cause a lot of them to lose their lives but what, what what is it they said? A patient is, cure is a customer lost. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and that that's a scary thing now, isn't it? it you know, it's a, it's only a matter of time, I feel, before we kind of get you know we're, we're halfway down that route map now to private medical, you know, whether that's Bupa mm -hmm. Vitality, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. it kind of out it is out there. Um, so it, I think we're only a, a a few generations, if not one generation, away from the kind of NHS being unsustainable anymore and you know nye bevan's dream gone yeah. you know the the the, yeah. the, the great uh, thing to come out of it for the working class people of the first two wars was was the nhs and obviously um the last thing these um aristocracy and upper class people want to do is keep us spud pickers and us coal miners alive you know that they, they want to yeah, they, yeah. they don't want us jumped up working class um plebs to to have uh, an education and have the ability to hold them to account. And, you know, when I look at it, and I'm, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I go, okay, what is the big goal? I think the big goal is uh, depopulation. It, it, it is completely, you know, whether it's transgender movements, whether it's the COVID vaccine to kind of, you know, every advert you look at on the TV is uh, erectile dysfunction. <laughs> so, you know, the humiliation yeah. and the putting yeah. down of the, of the you know, it just makes your self-worth go down. In the end, you think, well, might as well, might as well take myself away and top, throw myself off a bridge because, you know, well, or, or become transgender and get a new lease of life, you know. You well, don't no become a gracefully middle-aged and white anymore. No, it's not. No, well, if, 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 for example, if you live in Canada, and you've got the sniffles and you go to your doctor, there's a fair chance he might say, have you considered euthanasia? Because, you know, the, 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 the sort of the, the, death, the death cultism is, 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 is very much uh, about. And, and just a final thought on this. Um, I think the Daily Mail yesterday ran a story about the fact that um, the, the UK, well, the West in general, our population replacement level is it's we're way below the replacement level. Right. And the only way we can sustain our social services and all the rest of it is to essentially import the third world. That's a Daily Mail saying that. That's not a conspiracy theorist saying that. And and I'm thinking, but that's just another way to excuse what you're trying to you've been trying to do to us anyway. You know, if we want to get our population levels up, Joey, it's pretty easy to work out how we could do that if we wanted. We could incentivize that. We could encourage families to stay together. You know, there's lots of things we could do if we wanted to. But the last thought I would be having is, oh right, we need to bring in the third world in vast numbers to pay for us in our old age. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm with you on the depopulation agenda. I think that's exactly... Well, Well, it's that, and, and part of that is breaking the nuclear family up, obviously. Yes. The, the big thing in the British Isles, I think, David, is we've lost... 
you know, whether that was Protestant church or Catholic church, the the, yeah. the wasp, you know, the, the, the native yeah. person of these aisles, you know, my grandmother's probably the last generation that went to church religiously. Um, mm -hmm. You know, she, she'll she steam into the NHS now and demand uh, an appointment. And, she, and when she phones up and they try and kick her into touch with, you know, we'll see you uh, in seven days. Yeah. She's like, look, this is not free to me. I've worked all my life. I've paid my, I've paid for this. Right. This has been paid for. She yeah. said the church, we had to pay a, a, a percentage of our wages every week for a brick for the, for the churches to be built in Liverpool. Then when the churches mm -hmm. were built, you'd have to put money in the bowl. So, the, the, they they had an attachment to the church that I think certainly my generation, you know, via, you know, kind of what we've learned about the church and superstition and man in the skyism or whichever organized religion that is, is that yeah. it isn't, you know, it, has, it hasn't always been a force for good, whether we go back to Galileo Galilei or the Spanish Inquisition or, yeah. you know, the, yeah. the, the kind of rampant paedophilia that's kind of been going on in, in, in the churches mm -hmm. in, in, in the last, you know, 50, 60 years or whatever. Um, our generation has become detached from it. And this is where I think Islam's quite clever in terms of, you know, obviously comes and says it's the final solution, um, but also it's politicised. It's a, it's a political religion. You know, we, yes. I, yeah. I, I've met lads from all manner of different religions via the beauty of football, and there's good and bad in every in every single one. And the extremities of every single one, are, you know, are dangerous. Um, but most people are tolerant. Most people are uh, wanting to get on, want to do well for the family, want the same things as me and you, regardless of, you know, whether they believe in a man in the sky or don't believe in a man in the sky. And the problem we've got now is what do, what do the next generation of, of young yeah. leaders yeah. attach themselves to? You know, this is why I think Andrew Tate and the Tate brothers have had such a big uh, impact because young men out there are disenfranchised and are looking for something to believe in. You can't believe in politicians anymore. Most footballers are earning that much money now and they're acting like virtue signaling wankers. You don't really want to relate to them. You know, the characters are going. A lot a lot of sanitization in interviews and sanitization of of behavior. Um mm. and, and I think, mm. you know, the kind of rock stars now, even, you know, they're all, you know, they're, they're all puppets. When do you see a rock star falling out of a nightclub after sniffing oh. a load of Charlie anymore? You you just don't see it. Well, 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 even like I tell you, I've got to tell you, during COVID, I was it took the likes of Van Morrison, a country man of mine who, who's in his seventies, mind you, to be. One I'm, of I'm the a good few. friend of his daughter. We we meet at Glastonbury all the time, Danielle. I, I, I got huge admiration for Van Morrison. Um, he he stood against it all uh, and took a lot of abuse for it. But you know there were very few others that did. And then, but then of course, Joey, there's a rabbit hole that you need to examine. Examine the whole rock industry, and I'll tell you what, you'll get a few more grey hairs uh, when you discover <laughs> what goes on there. But but so now I'm not surprised. Well, well I've just seen if if you want to be a rapper, you have to get bummed by Puff Daddy or whoever was above. <laughs> yeah, it looks like there's been a. Uh... You know, it looks like, yeah. you know, alleged, allegedly it looks like, you know, there's been a finger of uh, literally taking it up the arse to get to get on. Yeah. I mean, I would call that a pretty tough initiation, would you not? <laughs> Listen, it, uh, it, it, it maybe is a bit a bit more pleasurable than, than putting your dick in a sheep's head or in a sheep's eye <laughs> or a pig's eye. But I don't know. I haven't tried either. I, I don't knock, tell you, don't, I can't, don't I can... knock it till you've tried it, David, is the <laughs> age old adage. <laughs> yeah, never judge yeah. never judge a man until you've walked a, a mile in his footsteps in his footsteps yeah yeah but, uh, or well, in his but, st stilettos <laughs> <laughs> or his clown shoes you know but yeah i mean the the, the, the whole the people the young people you're talking about do look around for figures you know that they can, the sort of uh, figureheads that they can inspire to. There are some good people out there doing that. You mentioned the Tates. There's a likes of Jordan Peterson, I think. Who's yeah, I like Jordan. Yeah, Jordan's attracted a. Joe uh, Rogan's been brilliant. There, there, there are loads of people who, who I think the the new generation will will gra are gravitating to, and all they're really doing is all those guys have one thing in common, and it's the same sort of thing we're saying. They're just talking common sense. They're just talking about you know if you're if you're a man, be a man. You know, don't apologize for it. Be a man. Manly virtues, all the things that that involves. What's wrong with that? Do you know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah. 
But, uh, you know, th- th- so many people don't want to go there. And and then because there's so much on the, the establishment side of figures, they're all they're, they've become so woke, so horrible yeah. that, um, that, that, that I don't think they I mean, no one's looking to, I don't know, Ed Sheeran, for example, or whoever you want to pick. I'll tell you who people look to, though. I, I wanted to say this one to you. Uh, Morrissey. Morrissey's the man, a yeah, good, the man. Morrissey's the man, and I do know that you. I, I, I'm, I'm right in saying that you were in. Um, uh, what is it? The Morrissey. Uh, uh, spent, spent the, the day in bed. Yeah. Spent yeah. the day in bed. A brilliant, brilliant yeah. song, good video as well. Yeah. I was honoured. I was honoured. The, the main man asked me. I'm trying to get him on the podcast, but um, I, it's hard to get. Nah, he's, a, he's a, I've got to go to the concerts and stuff. I was, I was meant to go, and I got double parked, and I couldn't get there. So. Um, hopefully he is this and I don't think he's best pleased with me not turning up but um, yeah what what a man and, and the more I listen to his music now certainly like Irish blood English heart yep. um, you know the quarry men like I mean just brilliant stuff that has stood the test of time he did an actual fact that some if you read the lyrics of I, I spent the day in bed even there's yes brilliant yeah that are really brilliant. Um, last year, uh, Morrissey did did me a great uh, service. He uh, he pushed out uh, an article that I'd written on the um, uh, the whole the whole Nottingham um, murders. If you remember what happened in Nottingham when three people were attacked and killed in the wee hours of the morning, and 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 I was just simply was this the, was off. this the, at the wedding? Was this the thing at the wedding? The, um, what was this? The, so th- this was in in, in Nottingham. And uh, the, apparently, some guy, some some immigrant, basically attacked three three people, two young kids in their 19, 20 year olds, killed them both, and he attacked this other guy in his van and killed him as well. And the media weren't prepared to tell us who it was. They were very quiet about the the background, and every everyone Joey instantly guessed, yeah, yeah this is probably migrant and and um morrissey has talked about this as well in in the past i mean this is why he's fearless that's why i love morrissey so much he, he he you know all he's saying is again it's like what we're we've done throughout this this uh this podcast you know we're trying to talk truth and and that doesn't mean we get it right all, all the mm. time but you know uh I, I was so pleased when uh he put that my article on his website you know morrissey and drunk, and uh, and obviously that was an endorsement. He's the Morrissey. He's probably the same age as me. Um, you know, I'd like to see younger uh, musical people do that, but I'm not sure if they can even do that. But you know, three cheers for Morrissey, uh, and uh, and uh, you know, uh, likes of uh, my friend Van the Man. Yeah, well, well, the Mars has certainly been an inspiration to me, you know, in, in terms of, you know, speaking the truth, you know, standing for what's right. And, you know, if you see something that's wrong, you know, kind of call it for, for, for what it is. Um, and, and and then just to take it off track a little bit, David, obviously uh, the, the the Brexit thing interests me. So how did you, how did you end up? I, I must have ex- accepted it. I was at Glastonbury. And I decided to abstain from voting, so I don't have a really strong position on it. Albeit, I think we should have stayed in the EU because it looks like it caused a lot of economic problems and cost of living, and obviously truck drivers trying to get abroad and tariffs. But who knows? In the next ten years, we might figure out actually it was mm-hmm. the best decision to. to do it. We just haven't had long enough in and out of it to, to to work out whether it was a good or a bad thing. Well, you see, we'll never know. We will never know that for a simple reason. We've never, we do not have Brexit and we're never going to have Brexit. And the politicians didn't want us to have Brexit. And and I'm talking about Conservatives and Labour, all of them. And so I don't think, Joey, we've ever been allowed to have the potential of Brexit, a sovereign nation. We never had that. And I mean, the bit that, the bit that really irritated me was been born. Johnson came to power on the he essentially said to my country Northern Ireland right you're staying in the EU single market what well, what we're so we've got Brexit but we're staying in the EU market and and I honestly do believe this is honestly I'm a belief that by about 2029 so give, give it five years I reckon we will be reversed one way or the other back into the EU so um, I, I, you know, you could argue all the arguments for Brexit or not, 
But um, the point is that I don't think the British establishment wants us to be a free nation, uh, sovereign in our own regard, protecting our own borders. So that's why I was, that's the, the stuff that I believed in. But I don't believe that's what we got. And I'm pretty confident we're never going to get it. And I think they'll reverse us back in. Keir Starmer has been brought in uh, to finish what Sunak and Co have been doing, which is to edging us closer and closer back to Brussels, you know. And if you look at the mess that the European Union's in, why would you want to be part of that? But not that we can speak because we're in a mess as well. I mean, basically, Joey, it's a plague on all their houses, all of them. Yeah. Well, this, you know, this, feeds, the this feeds into this. And I'm only just... Reading up on this now and becoming aware of it, this kind of World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, and um, um, you know, no yeah. borders, kind of a land with no borders and free movement of people, and um, you know, I, I, I'm as I say, yeah. David, I'm no expert on it, but it does certainly look like you know how how do you do that? Flood an area, collapse all its infrastructure, its social services, its NHS, it, it you know, yeah. cause absolute havoc to the to the local economies, and then. You know, we have to clear it up. So then you're asking for digital IDs because it's like, okay, who's from here? Who's not from here? And before you know it, you know, we, we've lost all sovereignty. We've lost all control of our borders. We've lost all control of our identity or, you know, digital currency. And again, I don't want to get too tinfoil hat on and I'm mindful it's a Friday night and I don't want to take up um, much more no, of your time. Okay. You've been very, very kind with it. The next thing I well, want to talk to you about is, um, obviously, you said that you see Donald Trump and and the Orange Revolution coming in uh, in in the states. I thought yeah. for sure. I thought we were going to get the first female president. Obviously, Hillary Rodham Clinton, and yeah. you know the adrenaline. I'm not getting into the kind of pizza adrenochrome thing because <laughs> whatever I've seen. But I was yeah. shocked. I was shocked the night that she never got in. Um, and obviously, yeah. you know, I then watched Trump, and and this is just you know, I watched Trump and. You know, he'd be, he'd be, you know, China and uh, hydrochloric yeah. but he turned out to be right. It does look like the evidence now suggests, you know, COVID was released in a Wuhan lab. It was a bio um, leak. That's Joe Rogan, and I'm getting that from the people they talk. But they're talking about it as if, yeah, this has happened. Obviously, it wasn't mm. a wet market in Wuhan. It was more of a biological uh, laboratory. Mm. Um, and and then uh, obviously ivermectin that Rogan was banging on about turned out to be a really good cure for whatever mm. was going around for everything um, actually yeah yeah and and also so did hydroxychloroquine whatever Trump was talking Hyd about so, hydroxychloroquine yeah. yeah yeah so yeah. so it ended up Trump ended up being right on that look they made him look a bit crazy but now you're looking at Joe Biden and oh. it looks like oh, oh, oh other than arrest them, lock them up, or kill them. It looks like Trump's going to get back in again. I agree. Uh, honestly, I, 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 that's your your spot on, Joey. Um, I, I mean, I when Trump lost in 2020, I thought that was it. But Biden, if you look at him, he's feeble, he's demented. Um, you know, his policies haven't worked such as they are. The humiliation in Afghanistan, you know, all the rest of the stuff. And Trump... The fact the fact that the mainstream media hid his son's laptop where he was with prostitutes and and, 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 yeah, and yeah. smoking crack. Yeah, and, and it was almost like it was a Russian collusion and it, that turned out to be true. Yeah, New absolutely. York Times buried that story. Yeah, which is why you can't trust the mainstream media. But I reckon, Donald, short of the things that you just said, and actually, you see, if they lock him up, he that will make him even stronger. He'll get even a better vote. Um, I think he's going to win again, unless they can cheat. And they're very good at cheating the Democrats, so they might be able to cheat him. But failing that, failing that, we're going to have Trump 2.0. And one good thing about Trump, no matter what anyone says, during the four years he was in the White House, there was no wars. No Joey. war, yeah. There was no, no war. war. And, that's, and I oppose war. So that if, if there was no other reason to like him, that's yeah. a good reason to like him. But also, you know, presidents who oppose war and the military industrial complex uh, don't usually live, you know, Robert... No. Uh, Robert Kennedy, uh, his, his, his father and his and his uncle, obviously JFK, can can yeah. testify to that. I mean, yeah. you know that that is my concern because I go, okay, we, we must be very as close as we've been in in a while to a world war. You know, we're probably only China, yeah. um, China take trying to take Taiwan away from a global conflict, um, and I would prefer that, you know. Uh, and again, I don't agree with everything he says and how he goes about things, but I, I didn't ever think I'd say this, David. I'm now like, I hope Trump gets in. 
because the world will be safer. You know, China yeah. won't fuck about with Taiwan because they know Trump's capable of, um, you know, fighting back. And I think that there'll be peace in the Middle East. And I think there'll be peace in, in the Balkan states very, very quickly should Trump get his hand on the levers of power in the states. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Uh, um, that, that, that's, you see, the, the American president is geopolitically very, very crucially important. And whilst you don't have to agree with everything Trump says, and I mean, I think it'll be very difficult for Trump if he gets back, if, if he does get back in, because the American establishment's still against him. Yeah. But, you know, as I said, to my, if you ask me, well, what was a, a successful Trump uh, you know, period in the White House looks like well, it, it looks like stopping war, stopping killing. Difficult because the military, political, media complex is against you. No, I understand that, but but he did achieve that during the yeah, first. He's beaten it period. once, yeah. Yeah, he's done it once, and and I suppose the second time round, he's a lot wiser because he knows, like he trusted a lot of people who stabbed him in the back. But then that's politics, you know. So it, it'll be fascinating to see anyway. I mean, Joe Biden is so bad. I mean, you, you can't, I mean, the memes about Joe Biden yeah. are great, though, mind you, fantastic memes. But, it's a, but I mean, I talk to my American friends, it's a trial of humiliation, having this geriatric, uh, uh, demented man as their, their president. So, I mean, that's why it's, it's going to be an amazing year. We've got that to look forward in November. We're probably going to have a British election in, in, in October or whenever Rishi Sunak dares goes to the country. So there's plenty of laughs ahead. When, when Rishi goes to the ex executioner's gallows. <laughs> It is. Yeah. it is. Yeah, that's why that's why he doesn't want to do it. But, but I tell you, I was convinced he was going to go on the 2nd of May because I figure if he goes to the other side of the summer, you're going to have four months of maybe, let's assume, decent weather. And that means all that migration coming across the English Channel is going to be so embarrassing for him. But the thing about politicians, Joey, once they get power, all of them, they become addicted to it, you know, real addicts, and they don't want to let go of it. And even though he's only been in for, I don't know what, a year or whatever he's been in, you know, he, he, I don't think he wants, they'll have to drag him out of Downing Street, which will happen. And yeah, then you're absolutely. Gonna, yeah, and then you're going to have the bloodbath of who's going to replace him. So that's all fire. That's all comedy gold as well. Yeah, well, I think I think Reese Mogg's angling for it, and he wants to take us back to the serfs and the feudal landlords, and he wants to take oh, us yes. back to a Victorian. I know, yeah, but that that's what it's at, you know the way he dresses, etc. That that's what he wants in his mind, and 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 that's the that's the scary thing in terms of you know I, I think the good thing about where we are, David, at the minute um, is that there's a lot of people now who are connecting. I mean, I never ever thought me and you, you know, we we never knew each other before this, but. But due to the way um, the world, the funny way the world works, you know, we're, yeah. we're now all connecting to to take on yep. a just cause, which is, you know, to, to tell the truth. You know, it's not, it, you know, it, George Orwell was famously quoted as saying, in times of universal deceit, telling yes. the truth will be seen as a revolutionary act. You know, saying women footballers are not qualified to talk about men's football, weirdly, is a revolutionary act. Um, yeah. You know, uh, uh, saying uh, an experimental vaccine that's causing long term illness or death to people is bad for you is 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 a revolutionary yeah. fact. S saying saying, that, saying that's not a woman, that's a man trying exactly. to be a woman a is dead. a revolutionary yeah. fact. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the thing about Orwell is he never figured out that we'd be having to do these bits of revolutionary <laughs> acts. But I mean, there it is. I mean, he understood what was gonna what 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 lay ahead, and and we're living. And, and I, Joey, Joey, do agree that we're living in an extraordinary moment in history together. And and I love the fact that we are all sort of um, making connections. Uh, and and I think. I think there's a hope in that, and I think it's a positive note to leave things on. I, I do think there's hope. I, I, I'm I'm not a doom merchant, even though you know sometimes it's dark. But by and large, I think that there's an energy and there's a truth that shines from all of us. And and the more we connect with each other and the, all the people you know watch us and contribute and join in, then 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 I think we have everything to play for. You know, I mean, it's a it's a game of two halves is is life, joy, and uh, we're in this point now where we can maybe turn the tide over the next you know ten twenty years, and we'll do it by connections and by just 
you know, being revolutionists, re revolutionaries by saying, uh, yeah, men can't be women. I mean, that's it. Who knew it was as easy as that? Eh? I didn't. <laughs> well, well, this is the thing, mate. And, and as I say, hopefully yeah. this is the first of many conversations. And when you got the live shows, and, and I'll definitely be inviting you on my podcast, and I'd love to come and support you in the live shows, because I do think that's a, yeah. a great way to connect people and, and a fantastic idea. And one thing before I leave you, I, I must, you know, Touch on there. We, we have to be very, very careful here because we mustn't forget that. Listen, the, the Conservative Party during COVID locked us down. Yep. Um, but yep. the Labour Party wanted to lock us down even harder. They did. Um, and, and you're right to talk about, you know, obviously the dangers of, of an oppression um, party. You know, if Labour or SNP want to chase after com comedians for hate speech when, you know, Comedians historically have always laughed at um, the absurdity of society, you know, whether that was the king having a court jester, he was the only person who could ridicule yep. him and make fun yep. of it so that, you know, that the, there was a, a nice equilibrium in there. And, and comedians, for me, are very, very important because they allow us to laugh at ourselves, to, to make fun of the absurdity of being a human being. And if we if we don't protect that, um, then we, we are very, very close to living in, you know, East Germany under the Stasi or certainly uh, North Korea under the uh, King John um, uh, dictatorship. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you take, as I said, Scotland there, where from the 1st of April, they bring in this new hate crime legislation. And that means comedians have to watch what they say. I mean, I, I love Billy Connolly. I think Billy Connolly is a great comedian. The and, best. Yeah, he's brilliant. And, and I don't think Billy Connolly could even exist in what Scotland's turning into. And that's going to happen us in, in England and where I live in Northern Ireland as well. They'll bring in, they, they talk about hate crime speech. There's no such thing as hate crime. There's only crime. But mm. they're going to use this to criminalise people like us uh, just because we will say things that they don't like. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we'll see how it, how it goes. But yeah, the Tories locked us down and took away our liberty. There was there was a wake up call for everyone who thinks, oh, you can trust them. But Labour would have done it even more. So that's yeah. why I think, Joey, as we go into the, the, the next cycle, the next five years or whatever, you know, there's going to be there's going to be some mighty ch tasks that that face us. But. If because we've all started to come together over this last couple of years, I think that gives us a power, which is something they fear. I think they actually fear that. And uh, so what we need to do is buckle down and double down and, you know, um, don't apologize for just speaking the truth and don't apologize for speaking up for reality. And, uh, you know, uh, and, and the more we support each other as well, that's the final thing for me to say. It, it's really good and healthy that we support each other because I, I hate to see this divide and conquer tech, tech uh, tactic working. You know, none of us is perfect. You know, I get things wrong all the time. I know that. But my heart, I, I like to think my heart's in the right place. And yeah, as I know this as well. Yeah, you know, and 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 so with good intentions and like-minded people, I think we can uh, we can perhaps rise up and really be the resistance that if ever it was needed, it's needed now. Yeah, well, listen, here's to the resistance and and listen, Mr. David Vance, I thank you so so much for your time. Um, I'll, I'll allow you to go and enjoy your weekend and your Friday oh, well. evening. You've been very very um very very given today. So hopefully this is the first of many, David. And as I say. Uh, Cheers, thank you, thank thank you very very much. That's been common Cheers. sense with David Vance. Uh, keep up the good fight. Cheers, mate.